So I'm working on my sixth book and I'm at the part where I'm talking about um, building a new life. The book is called You Dodge the Bullets. It's a relationship survival guide for anyone going through a breakup. And um, one of the steps as you heal from your expired relationship is um, getting a life, is building a life. When someone says, I'm going through a breakup, what should I do? I tell them, uh, you need to get a life. And uh, they think I'm a dick, and I can be. Um, joking aside, uh, I mean it sincerely, because when we're in a relationship, sometimes that relationship is our life, right? So when that relationship expires, um, we suddenly have a giant crack in our life. We lose our foundation. So for many, getting a life is part of the healing process. And even if you're in a relationship that's really healthy and uh, um, you know your relationship isn't your life and you have you know your own friends and passions and all that, um, <clears throat> the amount of energy and time, the amount of heart uh, intention, uh, you know, um, the amount of thoughts you have in a day when you're in a relationship is it's it's a lot, you know, think about like thinking about think about like when you when you wake up and you think about your partner, um, you know, texting um, what you're going to do this weekend. Um, you're considering your partner with almost all of your decisions. And that's not that's normal. It's not. It's not. I'm not talking about codependency. I'm just talking about uh, the the normal day to day. And so when you go through an expired relationship and that is now gone, um, all of that energy, all of that time has to be funneled into something um, productive, right? So instead of numbing and running, um, you want to funnel that into, of course, your own relationship with yourself slash building a life. And so I started thinking about what does a good life look like? And I started to think about myself and where I'm at today and, and, um, and my definition of a good life. Put a bookmark there because now I want to talk about definitions. I'll come back to what a good life looks like, at least for me. Um, but our definitions are where we pull from. And a lot of times, uh, we don't redefine our definitions, right? We um, we carry what's passed down. We trace definitions that are not honest to us um, from uh, previous versions of us or from, you know, um, when we were different. A lot of our definitions uh, live on in our subconscious and we're not even aware that they're not honest to us. So we're almost on autopilot, um, you know, tracing these blueprints that... Um, that are not accurate, you know, uh, that also may be created by parents, by society, by advertising. And, and so <clears throat> if we don't redefine our definitions once in a while, um, our alignment can be off. And so starting with our definition of what a good life looks like. And so if I was to bring it to myself, uh, in my 20s, half of my 30s, a good life meant, my definition of a good life was being super successful um, and having a, a solid relationship. That was a good life to me. I didn't care about anything else. Everything else was filler, you know, travel, hobbies, uh, pets. Uh, they were just accessories. And a good life meant you were super successful, you had fancy things, and um, you had a solid relationship. Now, obviously, that is not my definition today. As I start to grow and evolve and expand um, and work on my relationship with myself, I started to put different, I started to put weight on different things. And so today, as I was writing this uh, chapter in my new book, I started to, to ask myself, you know, what, what, does, what does a good life mean today um, for, for, for me at age 48, almost 49, like in a couple of weeks. And I, you know, I don't know if I have a concrete answer, but, um, here are a few things that I define as a good life today. 
and it's different than when I was in my 20s, of course. Number one, um, you need to have some life anchors in your life. And uh, let me explain. So uh, The Rock, a.k.a. Dwayne Johnson, calls his iron paradise. Uh, you know, he works out a lot. Uh, he calls that his one of his life anchors, um, his fitness. And um, if he doesn't work out every day, then he feels... Um, unbalanced he feels incomplete right it, it, it's what grounds him his workouts uh, one of the things right and we all need a life anchor so that's 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 his life anchor and it may be yours as well but for some it may not be that uh, for some it may be yoga for some it may be um, one of my life anchors is uh, a motorcycle ride um, me on my motorcycle um, soaking in the California sun wind on my face and hitting flow states, right? That's a life anchor for me. It has been since um, since my divorce. Um, creative spaces, writing, art, uh, you know, these, these can be life anchors. People can be life anchors too, right? Um, good friends and meaningful conversations, right? What in your life grounds you and they're not once in a while things. They're threaded into your life. And I think that's really important. So there's three tenets of a life anchor. One is that uh, it is practiced routine, like daily, you know, if not daily, um, you know, maybe once a week. For example, therapy can be a life anchor. It is for many. And uh, they don't go to therapy every day or most people don't. They go once a week. Um, so it has to be threaded into your life. That's one tenet of a life anchor. It has to pull you out of your head, right? So a life anchor gets you very present. A life anchor um, pulls you out of your head and gets you to live in the here and now, right? So that's another tenet of a life anchor. And the, the, the last one would be um, it encourages flow states. It encourages you to lose track of time. And usually flow states are attached to or tied to uh, whatever your gifts are, you know, whatever you're obsessed about that's healthy, um, whether that is sports or art or helping people or, you know, whatever it is, writing, dancing, cooking, whatever your thing is that lights you up, that makes you lose track of time. Um, I call it uh, playing with your Legos because when I was like 10, I was obsessed with Legos like many kids are, um, but I would lock myself into a room and I wouldn't come out for hours. I would forget to eat. I would spend the entire day just building shit. And that's a good example of um, being being obsessed with something where it makes you very present. You lose uh, track of time. Um, and I was good at it, right? So I got a lot of praise for the things that I built um, at that age. Uh, and so that, that praise um, fueled my, my passion. So those three things, I think, create a, a life anchor. And um, I'm saying this because I think my definition of having a good life or, or one of the things that, that's needed is um, a life anchor or many life anchors, you know. And as you're uh, listening to this, do you have life anchors currently? Do you have things in your life that produce flow states and keep you at a higher frequency, you know, um, creativity, love, joy, optimism, hope, right? Any higher frequency. So you're not dipping into the lower frequencies. I used to live in worry and dread most of my 20s. So I'm very familiar with lower frequencies. Um, do you have things in your life that, uh, um, that pull you out of your head and, um, keep you present that, that, uh, um, encourages flow states do you have and then are these things threaded into your life so if you don't have a lot of life anchors and you're just grinding and you're living in your head um, I don't think that's a good life I don't care how much money you have I don't care how famous you are I don't care how successful you are um, how in love you are I think that a good life requires many life anchors at least one, right? So that's one um, part of, of having a good life. And then the the other the other piece, um, according to my, my definition currently as a 48-year-old, is I think you have to 
position yourself or allow yourself to be a conduit. I think that um, you have to do things that are greater than yourself, right? You have to um, work on expanding yourself so something greater works through you. And it, and it could be helping people or it could be uh, being of service. It could be, you know, any way that you're sharing your gifts, right? So whether you're um, a dancer, a singer, uh, an actor, a writer, you know, any kind of art, um, you're a coach, anything that you are doing where um, you are you are actively working on your gifts to impact the world, to be a catalyst in someone's life, right? Um, because I think that when we make things about us, our world gets small. And I think uh, 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 we are now in a lower frequency. And, we, and, 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 and I'm not saying... I'm not saying to not make it about you because, of course, you have to practice self-love and self-care and, of course, you should make things about you. But if everything is about you and and your life doesn't have um, a, a, a purpose, and, I, and I'm, I don't like using the word purpose because it's just such a played out word, but uh, if you don't have um, a passion for anything greater than your own wants and needs... I don't think it's a good life. You know, Viktor Frankl talks about the power of meaning. And when you hang a life on meaning, um, it is usually tied to things greater than yourself. I've also learned that uh, when I started to help people, um, that's when I got traction in life. That's when I found um, joy. That's when my life felt good. And it doesn't mean uh, that it's easy. I mean, it's your life is actually harder when you are working um, to help other people, but you have more, more fuel. You have more motivation. You have more purpose. You have more drive. You feel more alive. So my definition of, of having a good life um, are those things, you know? Um, and of course, it still is success, and uh, I still value, um, you know, uh, my relationship uh, and the quality of my. Of course, it's still I'm. I still want a solid. It's still important for me to have a solid relationship. So it's not like that. Those things go out the window. It's just like I've shuffled my life cards, where there is more to a good life than just work, success in a relationship. Um, a good life to me means the ability to produce joy to soak in moments, to give myself experiences, to hit flow states, to drop into my body and feel something I um, was never, never able to do before. Anyway, I challenge you today to redefine what a good life looks like because we pull from our definitions and maybe you are pulling from a stale definition. Maybe you're pulling from a definition that isn't honest to you anymore. What does a good life look like to you? More importantly, what are the action steps that are needed to start building a good life?